Okay. Okay, I think that's just about five past ten. Uh, Joanna, do you want to kind of start us off? Hi. I, I don't know if I'm on screen at the moment. It's still saying you, Chris. Yeah, you're on screen now, Joanna, so we can start away. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Uh, bear with us. As I say, this is a, this first in time we've done this, so ex ex excuse us for having a few um, shaky moments. Just like to say hello to everybody. I'm Joanna Murphy. I'm the chair of the National Parent Forum of Scotland, and I'm, I'm really pleased that you've all come along this morning. I'm delighted that so many people could come along and join us for the first of eight sessions that we'll be running over the next few weeks. So as I say, please bear with us if there are any wee hiccups along the way. As a, as a parent myself, I know how hard it can be to support our children in their learning. We're not expected to be teachers, but due, but due to these weeks of lockdown, it's become even harder for a lot of us. So I'd like to really thank Chris McKenna from Count on Us for putting these sessions together for us. Count on Us have worked with most local authorities in Scotland and with over 300 schools, some of you, might, some of you or your children might recognise some of the resources or methods that he's using. You can also find out more by looking at his website, which we've given you a link to in your email registration. Before I hand over to Chris, I just wanted to give you a quick intro about the NPFS, for those of you who may not know who we are. We're a national and independent body led by and for parents, with a volunteer parent carer representative from each local authority across Scotland. At the many national groups and meetings we're involved in, we do our best to make sure that the voice of parents is heard and we highlight the importance of communicating with parents. As you can imagine, the last few weeks have been a busy time for us. We've also been working hard to keep parents informed through our website, our newsletters and social media. Thanks to everyone who's been in contact with us and please do continue to keep in touch. We have a news just in, we have just opened up an hashtag NPFS maths. So get tweeting and we'll see if we can break Twitter this morning. So just to go over some housekeeping for this for today for this session. Everyone will be muted and all cameras will be switched off. So you'll only see and hear from Chris throughout most of the session. If you have a question, please use the chat function. Chris will be answering relevant questions throughout the session but if it's not possible to answer you this morning, during the session, we'll try to get back to you afterwards. I'm sure you'll all be respectful, but just to make you aware, many children are likely to be joining their parents in this, so please consider this when you're posting your comments. And lastly, you'll receive a, a, a survey after the event, which I hope you'll fill in as it would be hugely helpful, helpful for us. We want to make sure that you get as much out as, as possible out of these sessions. I hope you enjoy yourselves this morning and I'll hopefully see you all at the next few sessions over the coming weeks. Now, over to you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, okay, hello everyone. Uh, how are we? First of all, I uh, just want to make sure that we're all ready to go here. Uh, this will be an interactive session, uh, just like if you have watched any of Joe Wicks' sessions over the last while you participate along and do the exercises. So this morning, I want you to participate and do the exercises as well. So make sure you have a pen and a bit of paper and shout out at home some of the answers. Okay, you don't, it uh, doesn't matter if anybody's looking at you in the house, shout out and uh, take part. Pauline, Greg, don't worry, it's gonna be fun. So I'm going to, you can see behind me here, I have the new Ministry of Blueprints board. That's a resource that is widely used in Scotland or Scottish schools. But I'll be doing most of the, 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 the talk this morning through the PowerPoint. So I'm going to share the screen with you. And uh, this will be the, the essay, what we'll do most of the time this morning. So let's get started. Let me just start the PowerPoint. So here we go. So this is a project run in partnership with Count on us, Education, the National Parent Forum Scotland, uh, Education Scotland, making maths count. And it's basically support parents learning at home. This first session is going to focus on early number development. And we want you to go onto Twitter and use the hashtag NPFSMaths 
uh, let's get that trending on Twitter, let's make a big noise about this. What we're going to cover today is we're going to cover some subitizing, part part whole relationships, recognize, identify, and order numerals, assigning quantities to number and name, number sequences, partitioning within five and ten, halves and doubles, or the even numbers. Now that might not make much sense to you just now, but hopefully uh, after this session it'll make a lot of sense to you. So this session is going to set the scene for the series of the eight sessions. So it's very important that uh, we establish kind of the fundamentals here and uh, really kind of start to see how the math is made here. This session will involve some fun. You're going to enjoy this, trust me. And it's going to involve some, ah, I see moments. So you're going to sit there and ah, I get this now. So going to get some the light bulbs uh, clicking in the brain. The mission from all of us, uh, Education Scotland, Making Maths Count, National Parent Forum, is to inspire everyone to enjoy maths more and understand maths better. Why count on us? Why have I been lucky enough to be selected to lead this? Well, we've got links with 25 out of 32 local authorities in Scotland in the last two years. We've worked with over 300 schools and there are over 17,000 numeracy blue principles being used in Scottish schools. They're very active, very interactive uh, and visual learning tool that pupils love using and teachers love teaching with. And all the strategies behind them really help develop that understanding as we, as you'll see as we go on. So, enough of the intro, let's get into the real part of the maths. So this is what we call a five frame. And I'll tell you something, I like five frames. I like making five and I like using five as a reference point. Subitizing, so that's that first, that first word I mentioned earlier on. What is subitizing? So subitizing is the ability to recognize the number of objects without the need for one-to-one -one counting. And you'll see exactly what I mean right now. So I want you to tell me how many dots do you see? So shout out the answer at home, and we all know that there is there are two dots. So that is you doing some subitizing. You didn't have to count. Ready for the next one? How many dots do you see now? Shout it out at home. Oh, some comments coming through already. Hold on, sorry, I didn't mean to do that now. Uh, give me a second. I clicked the wrong button. Life over for it, guys, just give me a second. So, right, here are we? How many dots do you see now? Do you see that there are three? And we might ask questions like, uh, how do you see those dots? So can you see one plus one plus one, or are you can seem to add one? I'm just going to stop share a second because I don't know if I get a wee slight technical hitch. Sorry, give me a second. I'd push the wrong button there. So I'm going to start the share again, sorry. That was that. Sorry, my fault there. So next question. How many dots do you see? We know there's three. So what we're doing right now is we're subitizing. How many dots do you see now? You know the answer? Shout it out. The answer is five. And what I'm going to say is we'll call this a fast five. So I'm going to give that name a fast five. These are called a fast five because I want you to be able to look at that and tell me that it's five very, very quickly. This is a ten frame. And I'll tell you something, I like 10 frames as well. I like making 10, and I like using 10 as a reference point. So after we build up all that knowledge using five frames, we can progress on to using a 10 frame. How many dots do you see now? Show out the answer. The answer is four. And I might ask you, how do you see it? How many dots do you see now? The answer is six. How do you know there's six? Eight. Hold on, back a second. You might see three in one side and three in the other side, or you might see it going up in twos, or you might just know what six looks like. Ready for the next one? How many dots do you see now? The answer is 10. Good. Right, and I'm going to give that a special name. I'm going to call that a total 10. You don't have to call it a total 10. You might think of a different name for it, but I'm going to refer to it as a total 10. How many dots do you see now? The answer is seven, good. 
How do you see it? So this is an important question because we can start to talk about how is the number seven made? Well, you might see four on one side and three on the other side, or you might see six with an extra one down the bottom, or you might see it go up in twos and so on. So that's an important question to ask when you're looking at uh, dot images or looking at uh, doing some subitizing here. How many dots do you see and how do you see it? You might just notice that it's 10 with three missing. How many dots do you see now? Shout out the answer. The answer is seven. And this time you might see it slightly differently. You see, might see it as a fast five and the extra two. So therefore we get seven that way. And doesn't matter if I turn it on its side, it's still a fast five and an extra two. And now we can do some subitizing without the 10 frames. So how many dots do you see now? The answer is, got it, nine. And again, you're maybe starting to spot this is five from the dice part, and that's four from a dice part. So five and four is nine. You ready for the next one? How many dots do you see now? The answer is six. And again, you might start, we might have to count one dot at a time, but eventually with enough practice, your brain will start to develop patterns and start to spot, look, I can see three and three in there. So the answer is six. Again, that's subitizing. We're looking at that skill of, I don't have to count every single dot. I can kind of group things together and get the total amount that way. How many dots do you see now? Do you have the answer? Are you shouting out at home? I hope you are. Yeah, the answer is nine. Good. And again, ask question, how do you know it's nine? How do you see the dots uh, grouping together? I see three plus three plus three, but some people might see it differently. How many dots do you see now? Again, my brain kind of works like I can see four, then I can see three, so I can see, I know the total seven. And again, that's us, we're doing some subitizing. So subitizing, just to recap, is the ability to recognize the number of objects without the need for one-to-one -one counting. Now, I'm quickly just going to check uh, if I've got, I'm not going to read much of the chat messages, but uh, we've got people sending me some key questions on my phone. So we don't have any key questions just now, so I will, uh, I will continue on. If you have any questions, put them in the chat box. If you're enjoying this, uh, let us know. If you're on Twitter, <coughs> get tweeting about this. We want to get as many people uh, involved in this across Scotland as possible. So the hashtag is hashtag NPFS Maths, or National Parent Forum Scotland Maths. Let's move on. Okay, so we're going to look at part part whole relationships. Uh, and again, that will come clear in a minute exactly what it is. Looking at how numbers can be formed, exploring the relationship between the uh, the whole number and its component parts, and it helps us make links with connections, uh, sorry, links and connections, addition and subtraction. So here we go. So I may ask you, oops, to draw eight dots in a 10 frame. So you can draw eight dots any way you like in the 10 frame, and I'm just going to show you most of the ways that pupils come up with. So we may choose to draw eight dots like that. But the way I have done it, you can see, well, what I've got this side, I've got a fast five here, and then I've got an extra three here. So I would like to draw a wee part, part, whole relationship picture here, or what I like to call a number bond picture. So I've got eight dots, but what is it made up of, or what is its component parts? Well, I can see I've got one part that's five and another part that's three. That is one way to make the number eight. And we can see there's connections and links that we can make. And we can say, well, 5 plus 3 equals 8. 3 plus 5 equals 8. 8 take away 3 equals 5. 8 take away 5 equals 3. So lots of connections we can make with that one picture. I wouldn't necessarily introduce this connections uh, written down like that straight away. I would do lots of practice with the visuals. And you can obviously be doing this visually, but you can use a lot of concrete materials, which concrete materials is hands-on objects. So whether you've got counters or whether you've got objects in the house that are classroom that you can use to, to, to demonstrate this. Next one, you might choose to actually look at the number eight. Well, actually I didn't see it as five and three. I saw six dots at the top and two at the bottom. So therefore, another way to make the number eight is two parts or component parts are six and two. We might choose to draw the eight a different way altogether and say, well, actually, you could draw the eight like four add four, four on one side, four on the other side. And again, we can make connections and link. We can see things like four plus four equals eight or double four equals eight, 
or we can even say, well, half of eight equals four. So trying to build up a lot of kind of uh, understanding of how numbers are made, how they're formed, and, and what parts can, can, can come together to make numbers. And all the way, just looking at that one picture, somebody might see it go up in twos. So we might see, well, actually, eight is two plus two plus two plus two. Or again, the connections are linked. You can talk about, ah, well, four groups of two equals eight, or just go up in twos, two, four, six, eight, and so on. So I'm just going to have a quick wee look in case anybody's got anything to say on the no, no messages coming through. So again, if you've got any questions you want to ask, uh, I'm getting them pinged to me on my phone, so uh, I can certainly try and answer them. Uh, hope you're enjoying it. Again, let us know. Uh, we want to make sure we get parents, children learning together, having fun, understanding maths. Yeah. Right, that's what we're doing now. So recognize identifying order numerals. So I am going to give you a, a, there will be links to this PowerPoint slide and any of the tasks that we uh, do today on my website at the end. So this next task is quite a good one. So I have basically kind of a, a document which has all these things in front of you. And what I normally do is cut them out and I would then group them together. So we can see we've got lots of different things going on here. But what I would like to do is, okay, right, here's the number one. I want to match that up with the word one, and I want to match it up with this one here. Then I've got the word two, then I've got the name two, and then I've got the numeral two, and I want to link that up with the images with two dots. So eventually if I cut these out and slide them about on the table and match them up, I'd be looking for something like that. So everything matches together. So that's a kind of good sorting activity to do. And again, at that, I will send a link or put a link to this task uh, on my website for you to check out later. Also, I've just added in an extra one there. So it's important that you notice that you can rotate them around anyway. And I'll show you that in more exam uh, with the number four here. So here, this is four dots. That's a different way to do four dots. Other way, other way. So it doesn't matter how they're orientated. You can have lots of different ways to do the number four, even like this last one here as well. So another way we can do subitizing is we can, as we can, so I'm getting a message through there, but I'll answer that in a minute. Uh, count the claps. So I'm going to clap and you're going to tell me how many times I have clapped. So a bit like the dot images, except this time we can, we can obviously uh, count things we cannot see as well. So I'm going to clap. Are you ready? And you're going to tell me how many claps I made. How many claps did I make? Do you know? The answer was four. Are you ready for the next one? How many claps? Right, I'm going to break this one, but I'm going to do it in two stages. Are you ready? Sorry, I'll start again. How many claps did I do that time? Oh, I hope you got the answer. The answer was six that time. So there's lots of things, and you can even be silly. You can even get your children to do dog noises or something. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to look that silly. But you can get do dog noises or something uh, to, and, and to count how many times we, I was. I'm not doing that. I'm no way. Right, learn to count backwards and forwards while develop, within 10 while developing the concept of before and after. So, count forwards from 10. So, can we see what that says down the bottom? We have the numeral zero. And we have the word zero. And we have no objects in here. Count up from zero, we go zero, one, two, three. And at this point here, I just want to point out, we can see obviously in here I've got one dot, one object. In here I've got two dots or two objects. And here I've got three dots. But in the zero box, there is no quantity assigned because that is. Zero means we have nothing, we have zero. And uh, it's important that children understand what zero is. And I think they'll understand when they come and ask for a biscuit. They say there's no biscuits left. How many biscuits left? There's zero biscuits left. You've ate them all. We can only go to Tesco once a week in lockdown. There's zero biscuits left. 
Continuing on the counting, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That was count, us counting forwards, we'll start again. So zero, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so counting forwards from zero. And it's nice to see that recognition with the numeral, with the word, and with the dot. So I can see here's number four, there's the numeral four, there's the word four, and there is the four dots to correspond. And we can count backwards from 10. So let's try that then. So 10, nine, eight, join in at home, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one, zero. I've just got this image of uh, lots of adults around about rooms just shouting out these numbers and it's, it's quite funny. So I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, so again, we can try this activity using the slides, but eventually we want to try and do it without the slides. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. I'm just going to quickly check, see if I've got any messages coming through. Doesn't look like it. So that's fine. We can continue on. It must be so clear. No questions are required. Okay, so we're going to look at some number word sequences. We're going to look at using before and after or more than and less than. So if I, we can see I have three dots here. If I put in one more, I can see that one more than three is four. I, from that picture, I can also say, well, actually, one less than four is three. So looking at this dot, if I take this red dot away or we hide it, we can see, well, one less than four is the three that we originally started with. Using the number line, we can see, right, well, what is one more than three? So you can see I've highlighted three. What is one more than three? We can see the answer is four. Then we can change the question. I can say, okay, what is one more than four? Well, I can see that one more than four is five. I can look at another question. So, okay, what is one less than two? So I've highlighted two. I can see what is one less than two? And the answer is one. And I can say, right, what is one less than one? So again, I've highlighted one. I can go see what is one less than one. One less than one is zero. Other questions we might pose or we might ask, we might ask questions like, which number comes before three? Which number comes after three? So different uh, terminology, but we're, we're looking uh, to develop the, the same kind of skill. Just a wee reminder, on Twitter, can you use the hashtag, hashtag NPFS Maths, that stands for National Parent Forum Scotland Maths. We want to get this trending. We want to get as many people involved as possible. I don't, I think Joe Wicks had under a million views in his first week or two. We might not get that far, but you never know. Scotland might be leading the way here. And we might actually get other countries coming in and just watching uh, what we are doing here. So please, let's get this trending on Twitter. If you're enjoying it, uh, let us know. Let the Twitter world know. Let friends know. And let's get them involved as well. Quick me check to see if there's any messages. Nope, that's fine. Okay, here we go. Other activities you might want to try, you might want to try counting on from four together. So not don't always have to start at zero or one. So we might say, okay, let's count on four together. So four, five, six, seven. We might count a sequence of three numbers and then get your child or a partner to say the next three numbers. Okay, I've got a question coming through there, so I'll answer that in a minute. So a uh, Five, six, seven. So I might say five, six, seven, and I would want my child or my partner or the learner to say the next three numbers. So if I say five, six, seven, my child would say eight, nine, ten. Okay, I've got a question uh, coming in here, so I'm just going to answer this. So a question from Liz: Would you always use a vertical number track for before and after? I would. 
either that, or you don't have to be a vertical track, Liz, but you might want to use a measuring tape uh, because the measuring tape has got uh, basically the numbers in their absolute position. So for early learners, uh, understanding that before and after, then it's very important that they see the numbers in their absolute position. So a vertical number line is really good for that, or a horizontal measure tape because we can see there's a clear progression. The one thing I wouldn't use is, I wouldn't, I'm sorry for the glare in the laptop there, but I wouldn't use a hundred square when talking about this eh, because the hundred square is far too busy and it's, it's not a great tool for early number development. So I would always use either a vertical number line or I would use a kind of a measuring tape so you can see there's a clear order eh, of the numbers there. Hope that answers your question, Liz. If you can let the guys in the chat box know, uh, that'll be great. Keep the questions coming. We like questions, uh, we, and we'll do our best to answer them. So, again, Liz, if you could just let us know in the chat box if that uh, answered your question, please. Other activities you can try. So we can copy and say short forward number sequences. Start from different numbers. So I might go six, seven, eight, and you repeat it. Six, seven, eight. Or we could say count together. I'll count one number, you say the next number. So I'll, I'll go one, you say two, I'll say three, you say four, five, six. So you could do alternate count and stuff like that. Or I might say six, seven, eight, and you say nine. Or we might say, I'll say three numbers, and you say the next three. So one, two, three, four, five, six or tell me the number after 17. What is the number after 17? What is the number after 17? 18. And we can obviously do all those activities backwards as well. Okay, well, I love the empty number line. So we've got the empty number line here. Uh, so Liz said, thank you, that was great. Good, so we've answered Liz's question. So brilliant Liz, thanks for getting back to us. Using the empty number line to estimate. So you can see here I have zero at one end and 10 at the other end. And I'm going to put this blue arrow here. And I want you to tell me what number you think the blue arrow is representing. Do you have an answer? I hope you do. Okay, keep that answer in your head just now. Now I'm going to get the red arrow to point at another number. What number do you think that's pointing at? Get an answer. And finally, we've got a green arrow. What number do you think that green arrow's pointing at? Uh, let's see if you got it right. Start roll. Sorry, I get carried away sometimes. Three, five, and nine. Did you get those answers right? If you did, give yourself a wee pat in the back. Well done, guys. Okay, let's try another one. So again, we've got zero and 10. Uh, sorry. And this time we might just have some missing numbers in place. Uh, so what is the number missing here? The red question mark. What is the number missing here? The green question mark. So this one here is three. This one here is eight. Next one. We, we don't need to go up in ones, we can go up in twos. So here we've got two, four, six, eight, ten. And again, I might hide a number. See what number is missing here. Do you know? Shout it out. The answer is four. Well, good, well done if you got that. And we don't even have to start at zero. We can start wherever we want. So we can see we've got seven and we've got 13. And we're going to play this arrow game again. So what number do you think that arrow is pointing to now? Do you have an answer? Let's see. Let's put another arrow on. What number do you think that arrow is pointing to? Do you have an answer? Let's see if you're correct. Do you have 10 and 12? If you did, well done, guys. Good. <clears throat> Let's move on then. So a wee bit of sequencing. So 
obviously we looked at the number line for sequencing, but we can just look at sequencing without the number line. And you can see here again, I, I've left out some numbers. So what I'd like you to do is say, what is this number here and what is that number there? What is that number there and what is that number there? So get your answers. And let me tell you, this must be eight. This must be nine. This must be 13. This must be 50. So we're going to look at, obviously, we've been counting in ones a lot, so we can do counting in twos. So I might say, okay, I'm just going to quickly check, see if we've got any more questions coming through. Nope, we're good to go. That's fine. <coughs> Right, so skip counting in twos. So let's count in twos. So what I use for counting in twos is I like to use the big grid for this. So I would draw two dots or use two counters uh, and say, okay, let's put two counters on there. How many do we have? We have two. Let's put on another two counters. That takes me to four in total. Another two counters takes me to six in total. Eight. Ten. Twelve. 14. Next. 16. 18. 20. Good, so that's us counting in twos, and I'm using either visual clues here, the two dots coming up at a time, or we can uh, use the link, if you can see me in the corner here, uh, I've got wee cubes, I've got wee cubes here, so we can actually use cubes or uh, physical counters to count in twos as well. And then I would like to link that to, so again, we could count twos in the vertical number line. So I'll go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And again, I like to see that pattern on a vertical number line or a horizontal number line. We can see we're, we're hitting one and missing one and so on. Obviously that's all my even numbers. Or, if you feel confident and, and children understand the hundred square, you can show the pattern of counting in twos in the hundred square as well. But again, as I say, I prefer the, the, the vertical number links. It shows you uh, numbers in their absolute position uh, and it develops the two, uh, counting in twos develops a nice pattern on the hundred square though, uh, as you can see. The reason I have red uh, circles is just to highlight that. 10 groups of two, 20 groups of two, 30 groups of two, 40 groups of two, and 50 groups of two, and so on. Which, if you look at this, two, four, six, eight, 10. Again, we see the two, four, six, eight, and the 10 part there as well. So, let's look at skip counting 10, similar method. So, I would use 10 counters, or if I've got 10 cubes, or 10 multi link rod. Cubes, so I can see that's a 10 rod, and I can go 10, another 10's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, so on. So that's a skip counted in 10's there, and again, I could demonstrate that on 100 square or number one. Skip counting in fives. We've got five dots. Five. Other five makes 10, 15. What's next? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Again, we can look at the pattern on the 100 square or on a number line. The reason I'm using the 100 square is because my number line only goes to 30. It's quite difficult to. Uh, see it on the screen or it gets too far too small. Right, I'm going to stop here and just check when I think, think, think I've seen a message coming through there. Uh, okay, nope, that's fine. I don't think there's any particular questions for me today, so that's okay. Uh, so we're going to look at partitioning within five and then ten. Again, if you've got any questions, please pop them in the co uh, comment box. Uh, and again, hashtag MPFS Maths. Eh, get it on Twitter, get, it, get us trending. Partitioning, what does partitioning mean? Partitioning basically means split a, num a number into its component parts. And it's linked to the, the first kind of slides we're looking at earlier on, eh, where eight is made of five and three and so on. So let's look at a wee bit more. 
of this year. So, how many blue dots are there? How many red dots are there? So what we're doing is we're partitioning five into two and three here. So again, like to that slides we talked about earlier on, a part part whole relationship. Again, this is where I would then start to introduce these mathematical, uh, basically, sentences here and say, look, well, let's start writing this formally down now. Two plus three equals five. Three plus two equals five. Five take away two equals three. Five take away three equals two. So earlier on, when we're looking at the part part whole, uh, at the very start, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily write these formally down, but now once we can establish uh, lots of practice that, I would start to actually write down the mathematical sentences. Again, this is linked to our subitizing earlier on that we did. How many blue dots, how many red dots? We can see it's five, we can see it's two, we can write, we can draw the number one picture, we can again, link it to the subitizing, but okay, we can write down our mathematical sentences. Five add two equals seven, two add five equals seven, seven take away five equals two, seven take away two equals five. Again, we're looking at partitioning seven here. So there was one way to make seven. Here's another way to make seven. This time it's four and three make seven. And again, the number sentences to go with that. So you can see the partitioning links in quite well with the bar model or the part part a whole relationship that we talked about at the start. Okay, the equal sign. We're going to talk about the equal sign. Uh, what does the equal sign mean? It means it's the same as. It means the same as something else. And I want to talk to you about its, pos its position is interchangeable. And I'll show you what I mean by that. And there can be more than one equal sign. So a lot of the time we think in maths, we think uh, the equal sign basically uh, is at the end and uh, it gets us the answer, but that is not the case. So. We can have the equal sign at the start. So eight is equal to six plus two. Eight is equal to five plus three. Eight is also equal to 10 take away two. Two plus eight equal to, what are you thinking? Two plus eight is equal to 10. Well, we don't have to write 10, we can write something else. It's equal to seven plus three. So we don't always have to have the, the exact answer. So the equal sign just means these things are the same as each other, they're equal to each other. So two plus eight is equal to seven plus three. We can have more than one equal sign. So eight is equal to six plus two. That's equal to five plus three. It's equal to 10 take away two. It's equal to double of four. The equal sign just doesn't mean you say that this is us in maths, we're going to get the answer. It means it's equal to something else. I could be a activity to do with all the equal sign is, is kind of filling in the missing number. So five plus something equals seven. And again, I would like to kind of show this visually. So five plus what equals seven. So I put my five dots. I realize I want to get up to seven. The missing number must be eight equals nine take away something. So again, let's, this is quite a tough concept, but if we use a visual clue, it really helps us. So, people typing in answers here, are they? I hope they are. Uh, so, we've got eight dots, but that's equal to nine take away something. Well, you can see I've got nine dots over this side. I want to get it equal to that side. So, what do I need to do? I need to cross out that dot to take it away to make it the same. So, eight is equal to nine subtract one. I hope you got that right, guys. Six is equal to double of something. Well, if I look at six, what is that equal to the double of? It's equal to the double of three. Did you get that right? I hope so. And it can even involve two kind of uh, mathematical kind of statements here. So four plus something equals nine subtract three. So I'm going to start with the four, but that's equal to nine subtract three. So there's my nine dots. I need to subtract three. So how do I get these two equal to each other? I need to add on some dots here. How many dots did I have to add on to four to get it equal to nine take away three? It was two. Who got that one before me? Well done if you got that one before me. It's a, a tricky wee concept, that, but I think the, the picture really helps build that up. I'll just show you that again. So again, we have the four something equals 90 with you. So I'm trying to make these equal to each other. So I subtract my three, 
I add on the, re the relevant number to make them equal, and I can see it's two. And we also don't need to have a visual clue every single time. We're hoping that we can get to the point where we can answer this uh, without using the visual clues all the time. But if the learners need it and are building confidence from it, then use the visual clues until they're ready to, to step away. So four plus three is seven. Nine take away what gets me to seven? It must be two. Four equals half of what? Four is equal to the half of? Can't hear anything. Four is equal to half of eight. And let's just look at a bit of halving and doubling now. A quick recheck of the meshes. No meshes so far for me, so that's fine. Uh, halves and doubles. So, again, a really important uh, connection in math to understand. So I'm going to have a wee number machine here that doubles whatever I put in. So I'm putting in the image of four dots and the number four. If I double that, I get eight out. So what can I say there? Well, I can say, so double four is eight. I can also say, and four is half of eight. So from that the picture, that we can say, double four is eight, and four is half of eight. Uh, okay, next question. Again, I just sort of want to link that, that to the subitize that we did at the start. So I don't know if anybody heard that. There's something that must be one of the kids' toys started to sing a wee song there or something that put me off slightly. So sorry about that. Uh, okay, so we're starting with the double machine and we've got nine dots. I'm going to double that. If I double that, we can see I get nine plus nine, which is 18. And again, that's linked to almost 10 plus 10 which would be 20, but there's two spaces missing. So again, we can write, uh, make these statements. So double nine is 18, and nine is half of 18. If I've got, again, just we link to the subitizing, uh, and we can see the importance of the subitizing uh, right through. And this, again, we'll talk about subitizing in the following sessions as well. And this time I've got a half machine. So if I've got six and then I put it into the half machine, what do I get? Out, I get three. And we can say, so half of six is three, and six is double of three. Let's see. Why are doubles important? Well, if you were going to look at something like seven plus eight, and you know what double seven is, you can think, well, seven plus eight, it's really just seven plus seven plus an extra one. And I know double seven is 14. And I know 14 add one is 15. So your double knowledge really helps you out with a, a lot of addition a, problems like that one there. We're going to talk about odd and even numbers now. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going to quickly check just to make sure we're getting no more questions. No more questions. Come on, guys, I like questions. So if you've got a big question, put it in the comment box for me. Uh, I know the, the team are working in the background trying to answer uh, ones that come in, but... Any for me, please send them in. So, odd numbers. So, sorry, odd and even numbers. So, what do we have here? We have one which is odd, two even, three odd, four even, five odd. And I might want to stop here and ask what do you notice and what do you wonder? So, what do you notice about the odd and even numbers here? Is there a visual clue or is there a visual difference? I'll go on to the next screen and say, okay, here's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Is there a visual clue, the difference between the odd and the even numbers? And you can see the way I, I purposely displayed the dots that all the even numbers, there's no space missing. They've all got a partner on each dot. Whereas here, nine, seven, I've got this extra wee dot kind of on its own. So I can get a nice wee pattern or a nice visual clue to look at the difference between odd and even numbers. And another way we can look at the difference between odd and even numbers is if we write the numbers in the 10 frames exactly the way I've written them here. So you can see I've written the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, up to 20. But I've written them purposely like that, purposely like that, so that we can say like, actually, those numbers there are our even numbers. So, 
10.50, and we've pretty much finished the first session. So I'm just going to kind of uh, recap here. So we did some subitizing. Hopefully you're clear what that is. The part-part whole relationships was basically how we form numbers. So five add three is eight. And that kind of linked to the partitioning as well. Recognize, identifying order numbers. So uh, talking about counting forwards and backwards and looking at before and after. Number sequences. Again, we talked about counting one, two, three. You say four, five, six, and so on. Uh, also, number sequences with numbers missing or going up in twos and so on. Halves and doubles, we mentioned, uh, we just covered that there, and odd and even numbers. So, the slides and resources can be found on my website, which is www.countonus.org.uk forward slash learning together. You don't particularly need that last forward slash, so it's www.countonus.org.uk forward slash learning together. The YouTube link won't go live until uh, a couple hours until it saves it, converts it, and uploads it to YouTube, so we'll get that working. That'll be on the National Parent Forum uh, YouTube site, but we'll get that out to you guys. Uh, again, use this. Sorry, I forgot about this quote. I love this quote. So, what is education about uh, and what is, obviously it's about fun, but here I really like this quote from Benjamin Franklin. Tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. So this is what all these activities are about. It's about learning together. It's about learners being involved in the activities, having hands-on activities, having visual clues to see the magic happen, to see the connections in the maths coming together. The hashtag NPFS Maths, get that trending. I think I noticed a, a tweet popping through there, so that's good. Uh, again, the link's going to be on YouTube. Uh, and if you like our stuff, I share lots of videos on YouTube and, sorry, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, on Twitter, we're at Count on Us Ed, which is the same for Facebook. So, uh, get messages, there's a, there's a whole team of people, and obviously, there's lots of maths groups out there. Uh, Making Maths Count, Education Scotland, and there's loads of great uh, practitioners and education officers out there who are desperate to, to help parents and, and teachers out there. So if you've got a question to ask, put it out there on Twitter, tag myself, tag Education Scotland, tag Making Maths Count, uh, and you'll get a, there's a whole number of people out there who are, their knowledge of maths education is, is great. So you'll you definitely get an answer out there. We're going to send you this website out as well. So this is on the slide. So there's extra websites for you to try out. I'm not going to go through them, but you can check them on your uh, when you download the slides. And thank you. Uh, we, this is our first session. We want you to fill out this survey monkey feedback. Uh, we really, really, it's vitally important that you fill this out. We want these sessions to be. We want them to be excellent. Uh, we want people rushing to. To be, to, to be attending them. So if it's went well, tell us. If there's things we can do better, let us know. There's obviously the QR code. If you just scan that in in your uh, mobile, just use your camera, that will take you directly to the, the, the link. It's very important you're absolutely honest with us. This is the first time doing this session. Uh, it's the first in a series of eight. You can sign up at the, these sessions already. Uh, if you go to the National Parent Forum website, or if you go into their Twitter page, yeah, I'll also be retweeting it as well. But please take the time and, and complete this survey. It's hugely, hugely important that we find out exactly what it is that you want moving forward. Uh, there'll be some bits that hopefully you enjoyed here. Uh, but also, the, the, we know that there'll be things that we can do better. and. and we only find out by, by 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 asking you guys and you guys being totally honest with us and letting us know. Uh, the, I say the link will be, uh, this is recorded, so this will be going to YouTube later on. You can watch it again. You can share it with your partners if they, if they weren't home at the time. Uh, you can watch it again just to maybe recap, share it with friends, colleagues, and so on. I don't think that's about that. So I'm obviously going to stay on here for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, any questions? I'm going to I'm going to come off the the screen share so I can you can you see me a bit bigger. I'm just going to see if there's any questions coming through. So make sure you're on that survey. Uh, make sure you use that QR code that 
scan your phone, make sure you're hashtagging us at NPFS Maths. There's the website again, Learning Together, girls.org.uk, learning hyphen together. Right, I'm going to stop share just now and just talk to you slightly bigger. Right, let's just see. The word subitizing is a new concept. You're welcome, Leslie Dixon. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Gillian Hill. The more advanced one, yep. So the next ones we're gonna be looking at addition and subtraction and then multiplication and the uh, division. Then it'll be fractions and so on. But this first session is just to build the, uh, the building blocks, the fundamentals before we move on. We want to kind of paint a picture uh, for all levels so you can see in the further the next sessions where does all this uh, understanding but what does it build on and you can see that progression do you have any links to a big grid yeah so jane crawford if you go to my website uh, i have basically well in fact what i'll show you here just now so this is the numeracy blueprints board so here it's here and sorry about that reflection in the uh, that's the, the laptop reflecting off that. But here is the, the new AC Blueprints board. It's got all these activities on them. It's all these things on them. It's a dry whiteboard. Uh, but what I have done is I have basically put a PDF version of the new AC Blueprints in the slides. So uh, you can print that off. But uh, these, uh, these are the boards that have been used in a lot of Scottish schools. Sorry, I'm trying to work out which way to show you this here. Uh, so you can get these from my website if you like them. They're a dry whiteboard, so you can just write some things on them and then kind of oops, rub it off. Uh, there's 17,000 of these being used uh, in Scottish schools. Do I have a link to an interactive one? Yes, I do, Jen Crawford. If you email me, you can. Uh, I can send you an interactive one. Yep, Pauline Gregg, uh, I think it's certainly a great resource uh, for pupils who have dyscalculia and dyslexia. Uh, I think the visual element really, really helps that. So uh, I think certainly there's parents on the National Parent Forum who have got one of these boards uh, and they've found it really, really useful. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it's very important that, I, that you do pick up kind of things that have maybe missed out four or five years ago. So. Uh, yeah, try, try as I say, try out the slides are live just now. So if you go to that link on the website forward slash countonus.org.uk forward slash learning together, uh, you'll see there's a, a kind of PDF of the numeracy blueprints that you can print off. Yeah, and there's my email address there for anyone who wants to contact us. So again, let's get the questions coming in. Uh, Good, Karen Merciless, my wife's an early years practitioner as well. Uh, she doesn't find my advice as, <laughs> as useful. <laughs> She's fed up listening to me. Good, get it onto your school Twitter. Yep, get all this stuff onto Twitter. We want to try and increase the profile of maths uh, and move away from it being a, a subject where only certain people can get. We believe the whole team behind us uh, believe that Maths is achievable for everyone. Uh, it's just finding the right way uh, or find the right learning style for certain pupils. Good. Right, let's, any more questions coming through here? Yeah, there's Cheryl Burnett on who, who's used the board to support a child who has additional support needs. Uh, so, and again, this is this, that, 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 obviously I've shared a lot of ideas with you guys, but that doesn't mean to say I've got all the best ones. Uh, the more you use them, with, and if there's a, a, <clears throat> like a parent group, then you might come up with some great activities or strategies that work for your child. Uh, just because I've been teaching maths for, for a long time doesn't mean to say that I have absolutely every single idea that it is going. Uh, and that's the most important thing that people, if you do find something that works for your child, whatever it is that you're using, uh, let people know. Uh, share it on the National Parent Forum, put it on Twitter. Uh, look, I tried this strategy uh, and it worked 
really, really well. So let people know about it. Right, let's see what primary level with the next session. Babe. I wonder if you should have my piece. Yeah, bring your daughter with you, Lindsay Cook. Yep. Uh, the next session is on addition and subtraction. So we'll, we'll try and cover basic subtraction uh, and we'll push on. So there'll certainly be bits that your daughter will uh, really, really benefit from. Do you have any good workbooks you could recommend? Uh, I'm not really, I don't want, there's, there's, there's tons up there, the workbooks really, I mean, the, the, the vital thing, it's more about the strategies, uh, how you teach them, to be honest, Sharon. Yeah, Alistair Black, there'll be, as you see, there's going to be eight sessions, so the next one's addition, subtraction, then multiplication, division, then fractions and so on. I'm just going to sit down here a wee bit. Uh, so yeah. But stay tuned, Alistair, uh, and you'll find uh, some more enjoyable sessions with uh, maybe slightly more difficult maths. Subitizing pronunciation. <laughs> Good stuff, Alison. Yeah, Karen Harkins, you can get the Unity Blueprints from our website, counterunus.org.uk. Yes, all children are welcome. I was going to bring my son this morning. Yeah, I'll bring him for the future, if I can get him up. Uh, I'll certainly bring him along to, to future sessions. Uh, just the first one, I was going to just happy to test out myself. You're welcome, Lindsay. Uh, Gillian, if you go to www.countonus.org.uk forward slash learning hyphen together, uh, I'll just share the screen with you, Gillian, just for a second. Quote from my seven-year-old. Yes, the maths guy is going to do a fraction session. This is a child who is not at all keen on maths. One session and she's all in. Brilliant, Robin. That is exactly why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, it's myself, uh, Pamela and Maria, Education Scotland colleagues, uh, it's got the backing of the National Parent Forum and Making Mass Count Group. We're all on this together for exactly that reason that you've just put there, Robin. So thank you very much. That's basically going to let us know why we do it, and that's going to keep us motivated for the rest of the session. So thank you very much for that. Right, sorry, I was going to share this link with the... Uh, sorry, what was it? Jillian Cairn, so if I just share the screen again, sorry. So Jillian, the, web, the slides can be found at this website here, us.org.uk forward slash learn together. And so here's the slides here, and here is the numeracy blueprints and the sorting task. And over here, YouTube link will go there later. So. Uh, it's that link there. Okay. Good. Right, guys, I think we'll uh, call it a wrap there, then. Let's, we'll give you another minute or two in case you want to ask one more question, and then we'll sign off. And hope to see you all next Tuesday and Thursday. Get signing up early. Uh, Share it with friends, colleagues. We want to include as many people as possible. We want to give people that we light bulb moments and we want to inspire you all to enjoy your math more and to uh, understand it better. You're welcome, Lisa. Thank you for the comments. So again, one more quick minute and we'll, we'll sign up. Uh, I think, Mary, if you go to... Uh, either the website or the Twitter page, you'll get the next link. Hello, Claire Fenlon. Thank you very much. It's the same Claire Fenlon, long time no see. Hope you're doing well, Claire. See you next week. Get signing up. Get hashtag Twitter going. NPFS, maths. There's a link to sign up there from the National Parent Forum in the chat box, guys. So sign up just now.
Right. Okay. I think we'll uh, we'll we'll end the meeting now. It was Sean. Okay, guys. I think we're going to end the meeting now. So thank you for signing in. See ya. I'm not sure if I can end this now, uh, or if I need the host to come in and Lauren to come in. Yep, Lauren's on.